Hello, my name is Mike Ward and I'm the Global Director of Content at Informa Farmer Intelligence. We're here at, uh, the, uh, in Cologne at the uh, Bio Europe meeting and I'm joined by Sean Marat who is the Chief Operating Officer at BioNTech which is uh, an upcoming uh, European biotech company and one of the most uh, prominent deal makers uh, in, in recent years uh, from the, sort of the German cohort. Uh, last year we, I spoke to Sean about a deal he'd done with Sanofi and I'm now here to talk to him about a deal that he did with uh, recently with Genentech. So Sean, thanks very much for, for, for joining us. So yeah, this deal you did with Genentech, I mean can you just do a recap on the sort of like, you know, the headline uh, features of, of that deal? Yes, yeah, so um, the Genentech deal was really a, a co-development, co-commercialization deal taking a, a individualized vaccine, meaning each patient gets a different product right. to market yeah. and marketing the product. And it, it consisted of a number of elements and upfront, of course, uh, uh, and near-term payment. So those two together total uh, 310 million. It's a phase one asset, I should mention. We've already been in the clinic um, and we are taking it then further with Genentech. And uh, for us, uh, the, uh, the tremendous interest was we're a European company, uh, we needed access to the US. Yeah. Genentech has a fantastic footprint in oncology in the US, we're an oncology company and we're a good obvious partner for us. Right. And, the, and, the, and the focus of the, the deal, in, so it's in the oncology space? It's the oncology space, the, uh, the, we're an immuno-oncology yeah. company and um, it, it's really about uh, looking at uh, neo-epitopes of patient mutations in the tumour, uh, identifying them, prioritising them and uh, making a vaccine for that patient. And each patient has a different tumour signature, so it's, everyone gets a different product. Okay, so, so that itself clearly uh, brings forward a, a commercial challenge. Um, so how how did you, uh, or how are you addressing that with, with, with Genentech? Because you know, weren't they scared that, well, you know, one patient one? Yes, it's a bit different from the millions of tablet batches yeah. that uh, we've all grown up with. Yeah. Uh, yes, there are a number of challenges. Um, we collectively, both Genentech and ourselves, do believe that we will overcome those challenges. The first one, of course, is, is cost of goods. I mean, you, you know, you're, you're you're, you're starting with a, a tumour sample uh, and you're sequencing and, and then uh, selecting and then manufacturing just in time. Uh, and you have to do that in a timely process and an efficient process. And um, Genentech most certainly will help us do that. We're responsible for the clinical manufacturing already, but on a commercial basis we're working together uh, to, build, uh, to build out good commercial processes for manufacturing. So that's the first thing. Um, the, other, uh, the other element to consider is how do you get this uh, approach approved? Because everyone gets a different product. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a a N of one in the trial. N of one in the trial. So um, actually the regulators have been quite supportive here and uh, the, they, they, they accept that individualized medicine, personalized medicine is here. And what they're looking for is, is keeping process constant. So don't change the process, keep it constant, and you'll be all right. So it's a really an extension of GMP, right. making sure that when we get the sample, we deliver the product, that that is all very tightly controlled. So that's with the FDA. Well, what about the European Medicines Agency? I mean, are they sort of falling in line with that? Yeah, that was with actually within Europe. So, right. you know, the. One of the, um, one of the uh, reasons why we partnered this, uh, as I mentioned, was, was to come into the US and with Genentech's contacts with the FDA, I would anticipate that we would have a similar right, okay. discussion. Right. So, okay, so that, so that, it's interesting that therefore you've sort of created that. When you were looking to do the deal, I mean, you know, what, what was the, you know, what did, what attributes did people have for them to be an attractive 
um, a, a discussion partner in the first place. Yes. What did, what did they have? What were you looking for them to bring to the table? Yeah. So 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 expertise in uh, in and uh, a global footprint for us. I mean, we're a German company. Actually, we're uh, I think probably the largest private biotech in Europe now, about 500 people. Um, but nonetheless, we know Germany, we know Europe, but we don't know the United States. And I think that was the criteria for us. Uh, and, uh, and someone who was not looking just to do a licensing deal, uh, but someone who was willing to step alongside us and develop this together. So this is a 50-50 co-development co-commercialization profit sharing deal 50 50 profit sharing so we're partners together in this and okay. that was important uh, and uh, I mean uh, yeah, it's uh, is it focused I mean I'm just trying to do sort of the limitations of the deal because of course this could as you said it's whatever tumors the patient has got is this therefore is it for all cancers I mean do they have sort of the exclusive rights to this technology for all cancers? Yes, I think this is a technology that we will be de developing uh, with Genentech for, for many, many cancers, yeah. uh, for sure. Because if you think about it, you're really quite agnostic. When you do the process, you, you sequence a tumour. You look for neoepitopes, the things that would be most appropriate to put in a vaccine to stimulate the immune system against the tumour cells. So it doesn't really matter what tumour sure. it is, as long as they express neoepitopes. So, okay, so you did the deal with Sanofi last year. Yeah. You've got this deal with Genentech now. Um, you know, how much bandwidth does BioNTech have for creating more partnerships with, with other people? And, and, and what are they going to look like going forward? Yeah. So um, I think that um, we do have bandwidth. We've got... Uh, uh, a number of technologies for underneath our company, e each um, specifically focused. So we have the messenger RNA technology, cell and gene therapy technology, protein therapeutics, and recently we added small molecules. Um, I think in, in all of those areas there's still an opportunity to, to partner. But we will continue this risk sharing, profit sharing model, just as we've done um, with Sanofi, where we have such rights for two of the five programs in that in that collaboration and that's that and so that's again you're always going forward you're always going to look for some sort of share of risk and share of upside share of risk share of upside and better control because as a 50 percent partner you have of course some decision making rights that you don't get under licensing agreements and that's important for us because our long-term strategy is, is building a, a fully integrated biotech company with our own products. Which, which of course was really, really popular in the, uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, and then kind of fell by, by the wayside. How challenging though, and this is, this is my final question, um, how challenging is it as, I mean, okay, you've got 500, you, you're a substantial company in terms of size, but you're dealing with part, you know, companies that are much, much larger. Um, what challenges do you have to sort of convincing them that actually you deserve to have 50-50 share of um, uh, bragging rights, etc.? Yes, I, I, I think it's a, I think um, um, big pharma companies uh, are, are interested and understand our model just because we're so committed to it. And they're willing to accept it, I think rather than the traditional licensing. For them, of course, it's also a hedge against their risk because we're paying 50% of the cost. Yeah. So, they, so there's, a, there's a hedge for them. But I think that it's a, a really an understanding of what we're trying to do that help convince Genentech and others, actually, that this is, this is a, indeed a sustainable model. Okay. So, so what we're going to do is this, um, this deal is in fact the subject of a case study that's going to take place at the Genesis meeting on December the 1st. And Sean will be joining me and some uh, other uh, industry watchers and we're going to actually deconstruct the deal as, as much as, uh, as, as we're allowed to uh, for confidential reasons, but to actually understand you know, some of those uh, pain points and, and how the, the, uh, the two 
the two participants in, the, in that discussion uh, resolved uh, those challenges to, to come up with this, this interesting deal. So attend Genesis and you'll, 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 you'll hear that, uh, that case study. And Sean, thanks very much for, for thanks, stopping Mike. by. Cheers. Thanks Thank a you. Lot.